We are back here now on the show to talk about something a little bit different, something I feel like we haven't brought up um, in a few weeks now, talking about rules and restrictions and just mandates around the NFL and just getting more into the rules about everything surrounding the NFL, not so much the players, not so much on the field, things that do matter um, off of the field as well. And this one was an interesting one that was brought up that I came across over this weekend that the NFLPA wanted some more restrictions towards the media in regards to their access to the players' locker rooms after the game. The new NFLPA executive director, Lloyd Howell, has brought up this topic of media access in locker rooms and just restricting some of their access. According to this interview he did with the Washington Post, he talked about it in just an overview of what he's looking to accomplish here with this new mandate, this new rule change potentially with media and their access to locker rooms after the game. I had the statement he had on here as well. Uh, You guys can see it now on your screen there. Uh, Lloyd Howell basically opening up his statement, his general senses on this saying, what I was hoping to achieve on behalf of the membership is to accurately articulate how they feel and they do not want to be interviewed when they're naked, to open the door for doing some solutioning of what could be more effective. He said that in an interview with the Washington Post recently, and right now, the NFL mandates media access, so interviewers can go in the locker rooms, but um, I think the period right now is, I think it's around 15 minutes right now for that grace period that players have to kind of get ready, get undressed, get everything that they need to do, and then the media can come in there and interview the players that they want to interview, that they want to get uh, on camera and things like that. But that really isn't the, I guess that's not the biggest problem, the general idea with the problem. It's mostly the players around it because you have a ton of cameras and the way you line it up, the way you, um, you frame your shot in terms of who's in the background, what you're seeing, what you're hearing in the locker room, it almost takes away from that locker room aspect of it all, the locker room atmosphere that all players love about it. You know, it feels like a sacred space there in the locker room. And then after a game where, you know, tensions could be high, tensions could be super low after a loss or something like that, frustrations could boil over, you hear something in the background that you're not supposed to hear. It's not so much about the player that you have on screen. You know, everybody can um, get dressed, get told that they're being interviewed, get everything, you know, together, right? That's not too hard, but the rest of it, everybody around it, you know, from the player side, it almost feels like you don't have to, you know, monitor what you say or anything like that because at the end of the day, it is the locker room, but you have to be careful because there's cameras and everything on there that will capture something that you might not want out there to everybody to hear. So that's sort of where I believe this problem is going, some of the issues that surround this and having a ton of cameras, a ton of people on in the locker room where, again, like uh, Lloyd Howell is saying, not so much the players on the camera, but everybody else, awkward that you're trying to get changed and there's a ton of cameras in there. They might not be interviewing you, but you can't feel too much comfortability getting changed or doing your own thing when there's so many people in there that aren't really supposed to be there. But with more media getting into the NFL now, them trying to expand more and more. It's not really going to change too much, but that's where the root of the problem is, obviously, with that. The union has already brought this issue up with the NFL, the Pro Football Writers of America, so they are making their voice heard on this topic, now trying to gain a little bit of momentum here to try and get something, um, as Lloyd Howell said, solutionized here with the NFL and seeing if they could change anything about this. And in a separate statement, same interview, but just continuing on with uh, Lloyd Howell, he continued on by saying, I've heard and I've seen all the reasons why the media is hesitant or resistant to changing it. Players duck out of the back. They don't want to do the interview. The list goes on and on. The desire isn't in any way to prevent. The desire is to let me be decent. And it brings up a good point, um, a good point on the other side of things, you know, with the media, a lot of times these players don't want to be interviewed. A lot of times they, like I mentioned, after a loss, you don't want to be in there too often. You don't want to dilly dally and just stay in there with everybody hot, everybody probably not saying much. Um, if it's a bad loss or if you get your butts kicked or something like that, 
you don't want to be in there and you definitely don't want to talk about what went wrong uh what did you do wrong what did this other guy do wrong what could you have got done better you don't want to hear any of that probably um especially if you're getting your butts kicked in a game so that leads into some players you know you know just sneaking out like they said or just not wanting to do it maybe not giving the best of answers or something like that um that is a fair point on the side of the NFL and media wanting to get in there but according to Lloyd Howell you know that's not it at all they don't want to prevent it they just want in reality just want everybody in there to feel I guess more comfortable um be at a level where they aren't feeling exposed I guess in a way um being in the background or just surrounding with a lot of people in their in terms of the media now, on the other side, the Pro Football Writers of America president, Calvin Watkins, agrees that the reporters don't want to interview half-dressed players, but he also emphasized that they've already told the union that there are already rules in place for players to have the privacy for, um, or before interviews, excuse me. There's already rules in there to kind of protect the privacy of the players already, and almost suggesting that that's almost good enough, as I interpreted it, um, but in response to that, now the NFLPA has suggested that maybe you have players, reporters interact in just a different part, not in the locker room, maybe somewhere else in a different room or something like that, which I don't think is the worst idea or also just extending that grace period by, um, 10 or 15 minutes more. If they have to be in the locker room, if they want to be in the locker room, just extend the grace period, which again I don't think it's the hardest thing to do, obviously. Um, but the NFL's media policy has already been set and distributed already for this upcoming year. So according to Mark Mask of the Washington Post, any changes that most likely will happen that both sides can agree to won't happen until 2025. So this is being brought up now, but no actual changes most likely won't come until the following season, which if it happens to be just being in a different part of the arena, not necessarily in the locker room or just extending the grace period. I think that's probably going to happen. I don't see why that could be too much of an issue um, right now as I stand and just having all this information on it right now. But really the biggest overarching point, the general idea that I got from this was that the way it's lining up, that I just mentioned that how this won't change until 2025. The way it's all lining up with this, the 18-game regular season proposal, the off-season proposal changes that could also be happening, this is all lining up pretty nicely to start really coming together in 2025 or 2026 at the earliest with um, this media policy now, the off-season changes sort of having the NFLPA propose sort of a rough draft of what they would like the offseason to look like, you know, starting later and ramping it up in the month of uh, July into the middle of July. That was a proposal from the NFLPA. They posted it, um, about it and what changes they'd like to see. So how everything is lining up now, um, plus the reports that you saw last week of some high-end conversations already being had from the NFLPA and the NFL about an 18 game regular season. Nothing's going to happen now, obviously in regards to that. For 2024, it's going to look exactly like it did last year, but with all these things now starting to pile up on top of each other, I think next off season we're going to see and we're going to look at just that off season I think being dominated by these conversations around the entire league about the bigger problems like the off season, media access, the 18 game season how they can start slowly integrating all of that starting in 2025 because everything is lining up perfectly now. Um, and that's the biggest thing I took from this, honestly. Um, the reporters, um, the reports already saying that these conversations are happening. Plus, um, right now, if it does line up to be like that in 2025 or 2026, you would have to think, if it is as inevitable, which I believe it is, um, as everybody seems to believe, that the 18 games is going to happen regardless if the players or the NFLPA are on are uh, on board with it all. You know, they come to a compromise. Right now, if you're the NFLPA, if you're the players, I I would stockpile as much of these things as I can. You know, the media access restrictions, make that a requirement to get the 18 games, make that at least a strong desire 
of your side to want to change in this new CBA if they come to an agreement on that, changing or come to an agreement on an entire new CBA. Also, the off-season changes, if you can come to an agreement on that. If you're the player side, if you're the NFLPA, of course we want that near the top of the list. Of course, the revenue split is going to be in there as well. How much the NFL and the owners are willing to give up even more to get to 18 games. All those sort of things. I think now we're going to see it ramp up a little bit more. Plus, you have the international games also cranking up next year as well. There's a lot of conversations now being had on these things starting to line up. Again, it's going to be it's pretty quiet now. I think we've heard enough of that and... We're going to probably still keep hearing about it, but nothing's going to get done, I believe, until next year when all these things, I think, are going to start coming into fruition in terms of actually getting something done done about this, maybe putting it up to a vote, something like that next offseason, or at least in December when the meeting happens again in the NFL. So keep an eye on those dates. This is just another thing to keep in mind in terms of what could be at the negotiating table, how could both of these sides, the NFLPA, the NFL and the players come to an agreement on some of the bigger topics around the NFL that just don't have to do with on the field things, you know, playing and stuff like that. There's a lot bigger things going on here. The NFL is growing more and more, it seems like, every month. So these things um, are going to start to dominate some of the, the headlines, I believe, once we get into the regular season later on in the year. So keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on this to be a major talking point, I believe, in those talks. But With that, we'll wrap it up there with this segment and move on to the second half of the show. After this break, we're going to get into George Pickens and what he said about the receiving room there in Pittsburgh. Do they need outside help or does George Pickens believe they have enough already in-house? Then also, more in the AFC, Shane Steichen doesn't want to limit Anthony Richardson's run game after suffering that shoulder injury that has become a topic of conversation, but Shane Steichen knows where he stands. I'll let you guys know what he said and more on that topic when we return after this break. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 